Um, hi, um, um, hi, Ruben. I'm here with you again today. We've been talking over um, over the last a few weeks about your time, kind of, kind of recently, and how hard it's been for you. I think the first kind of question now I have for you is how um, is how are you? Uh, thank you, thank you for having me, and thank you for the warm welcome. Um, I'm really fine, thank you. I'm just uh, calm in this period now that uh, we are. We have, I think, it's eleven days until the next game and uh, looking forward to go to the uh, and attack the last part of the season. Yep. Um, I know that it's been a really hard time for, for you and also the players and the staff. How is kind of, kind of, kind of it, 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 the atmosphere inside the whole kind of club right now? Well, we, we try to separate the atmosphere from the football side and the kind of the rest of the things around the club. I I must say that the environment uh, and the bubble that we have created at our football is really good. Uh, from the members to the technical staff to the players, with everything, every staff supporting. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a quite unique environment. We all know the uncertainty that is around us, yeah. but uh, I think through the effort and the good manners that they have shown, we we have created a really really strong bond in the team. So I feel good and uh, I feel ready to continue going with the team until the end because it's a, it's a pleasure to be leading that kind of um, dressing room. Um, I'm just going to speak on kind of, kind of behalf of like a fan here, but also a fan in terms of the football club. Um, you have galvanised the whole fan base as a whole. And I thank you and also the players for that because it's not easy. And the players have been putting in everything. The staff have done the same, and also you've done the the apps, the absolute same. In the last twenty three matches, you have also picked up thirty seven points. What what has been the change from the start of the season to now, and what has changed? Well, we have gone through a process during the season. We have a really young squad. Obviously, we need to make some decisions in the beginning of the season. Also during the season, uh, I think we we needed to adapt our philosophy and our principles also to the team. Uh, we needed to suffer some of some some defeats or some moments that we didn't control the games to learn how to control it as a as a group as a team. Me and myself needed to adapt into the situation, and I think that has been the that has been the big change uh, to to adapt and adjust into the into the league and into the. Yeah into the um, the context that we were, but also to uh, adapt and adjust into the difficulties of the piece that were dragging a lot of energy from myself and from part of the team. So we quite often make a decision in November that to move a little bit, uh, to keep with our principles for to and tweak the system a little bit uh, with the kind of players that were playing that system. But also we decided to don't pay that much attention into the into the new ownership or the rumours around, just being focused on the football. That has been the big change. Uh, we had a game against Wickham when we won that game and the dynamic change. And all of a sudden, we, we showed that we can comp- not only compete, we also can win football matches. So I think it has been a process. And in that process, in the first part of the season, we learned how to do it. And in the second part of the season, we improved how we do it. Um, also, Ruben, I also talked to you back in May and also June time, um, and you were just on really, really the cusp of also getting a job. You had you had kind of work permit um, kind of problems. Do you think maybe you joined pre-season too late to really get get really the process kind of going in terms to in terms of the flow of it? No, no, it was it was not about my my joining because if if you join a, a week or ten days later, but uh, the club is on point, you can just make the proper transfer window. You have not because in that moment we from the very beginning we have the HMRC and payment. Uh, we had the transfer bank that we didn't name. We were not able to play for transfer to pay for transfer immediately when we didn't pay that HMRC. We get in the transfer embargo, so we were not able to sign any kind of players. Yeah. Uh, we have players from the technical staff holding to come because uh, the situation with the with the money was the financial situation was not clear so we started late but it's not because of only my work permission we started late because also in the terms of recruitment and new players in the team uh, we were not we didn't have the fundamentals because the financial issues were not were not clear 
Um, I do want to touch on Wolves Wars, so the recruitment part of it, but I just want to start off really by the start of it. What really kind of attracted you to the football club? Because you know, and I know, at that time there was um, it, it was a tough time. So you you must have had kind of kind of all kind of all kind kind of also the offers from also the also the other clubs. So what attracted you to that club at that time, or more so with these? It's, it's well, it's always the first of all is the intention. No, when they call you and they say they are interested to hear uh, about your philosophy, they have been watching uh, some games. Uh, of Southampton, obviously, and they want to create a team that is young, energetic, that uh, want to go for the games, uh, good in high pressure. Um, so we had a, quite a couple of very good meetings with the idea and the philosophy that I wanted. And we know that League One was is a hard category, but I think it was a good a good movement because, uh, especially with the with the fan base for the in the city and the context of the club is a big club a, a very a very a club that is uh, around 150 years uh with a really strong crowd and a place that we th we thought i thought that we can go there and make the difference and create a good long-term project also for me as a manager and as a person was important uh we knew there were some issues in the past uh in those things you can never be secure that it's not going to happen but we got secure. We saw some documents that we, we we will not have the same problems in the future. Unfortunately, it was not the reality. But I think the project and the the way that we wanted to do things in the very beginning it was very attractive for me. When you were in kind of kind of the the, the talks was with, with with the club, who who were part of the negotiations kind of with you, and what were the project? What really was really really the project about? And what was really kind of promised to you, and what kind of reassurances were made, made to you? Well, there is parts of the conversation, obviously, that they can you can keep private, and the things that we said in that time, and the things that we said in that time. The project was a project in the three years, trying to the, to put the team back in the championship and trying to get the team uh, with a lot of young players, but also uh, create quite a mix with the experience or players in their in their in their peak of their career and playing in a way that we wanted to play. That was the excitement of it and that we had the platform on that. In, in terms of the conversation, we had a conversation with every single uh, person that needs to make the decision, from the owner to the CEO, with uh, Mark Bowen as a sports director, of, uh, with Brian Carey as a head of recruitment, and uh, we were all in the same boat. Um, in terms of the talks with, 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 with the owner, what what was said in that you know I know and of course you're not can you can't say too much about that but was it said at the time that he was looking to sell um, sell the club? No, 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 we never talk about that in that period of time. We talk about creating a project uh, for the future, a club that can be sustained uh, by him and uh, a club that can can move forward and go to the next chapter with uh, with a clear idea and identity. Um, how involved were you in terms of the um, in terms of the recruitment process? You obviously brought brought in Charlie Savage. You brought in a few other young 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 players. And how involved were you in, in that? Well, I, I was I was fully involved within the project. Uh, we we together with Mark Bowen and with uh, Brian, we had the profiles that we wanted. Uh, sometimes the player came with through different resources. Sometimes the player came through Brian Carey. Sometimes the player went through Mark Bowen, sometimes the players like Tom Ballard came through myself and my experience working with them. It was quite a unique experience because we wanted a certain kind of player, but we were in a very small pool to, to recruit players. So we needed a lot of specific situations there for our players to come to our side. We were not able to pay transfers, we were not able uh, to, to get those players registered in a big part of the summer. And uh, we needed players that can play the idea that we wanted. So it was quite difficult, but yeah, I was fully involved with like, like it must be, uh, or I think it was a good uh, synergy because a good, a good combination from everyone in the football side of the club. Can you talk to me about how like a Ruben Sellers team plays? Well, uh, my team, uh, from the very beginning, my idea is to have a team that is very 
from food that energetic, trying to go to to attack the opposition as quick as possible with quick combinations and now into the final third and have very, very intense against the ball in the counter press when we lose it, having players around and when we are defending, trying to defend as high as possible to recover the ball and we always say that we defend to to score goals so and use that transition as a tool for us to to create and generate. You obviously worked with with also Ralph. Uh, he worked in terms of the Red Bull model. Have you learned off that kind of model in terms of the pressing you talked about there in terms of the kind of intensity um, of it? Absolutely. I think the my the, the time that I spent it with Ralph and the time that I spent in San Phantom uh, just basically uh, complete my idea of football. Found uh, ways to do things that uh, I didn't have before, and uh, I completely embrace that philosophy because it's what I feel as a coach and as a person. Yeah. So in terms of that side of it, when you left so when you left self um, Southampton, were there talks in terms of you and also the club in you staying on working with also Russell Martin, or or um, or was it a case of you just left as as of then? No, I was never open to to work with uh, another manager in Southampton. When we agreed in my last contract that I was as a manager, I was very specific that I didn't want to continue in the club if I was in a position different than the managerial position. When you left the club, how much kind of kind of kind of offers did you have in terms of the league, in terms of kind of the international scale? What What do you mean? In terms of when you when you left the club, you obviously, you obviously, you obviously joined Reading now, but have you got when when you have a um what the what the what the what the what the what the opportunities at that time to move um to any other club? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was some talks, but it uh, Reading was the only one that came uh, and. And it was really not serious, but it was wanted to go ahead with the talks. So it was uh, a couple of clubs in England, and it was a couple of clubs abroad. Like we're interested, but we didn't move forward after the first uh, conversations. I don't want to go too far on this, but I have to ask just because I think it's important also to ask: How hard is it to manage a club where they've got Mike when they've got? Microwave meals. You've got bills being unpaid. You've got players' wages be, being unpaid. Your staff wages being unpaid. Your kind of assistant manager left. Your coaching staff left. How hard has, has it been for you to really manage the club and really galvanise the club? Well, there is in in your introduction to the question, there is some things that are not exactly like that. The players has never been paid in unpaid in my time here, or the microwave situation. It's true, but it has some context. So. Let's say that uh, the, the question for me can be more about how hard has it been to work with those challenges that you are not used to work in a normal place. Uh, yeah. I think it, it's also a kind of process. I think yeah. in the very beginning, every every challenging in situations like the points deduction is hitting you hard because you you are working in an environment and then you, that environment is just taking you like the points deductions, like the uncertainty with the payments that always arrive, but always until the last second we yeah. were like, yes or not. Uh, it's hard in the very beginning, but and unfortunately, I would say, but or, or or with fortune, you get used to some of the situations, so you know what kind of situation you can expect, and then you know that mm, the truth is not always a hundred percent true. So it can change, like the post deduction can come, or tomorrow you can wake up and see that the, 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 the training ground is in the process to be sold um, and we learn how to cope with that. So I, I think it was harder in the beginning than it is right now. But how do you hear from these point like like who's like where's the where's the kind of kind of alignment between the club, between you, the sporting director and owner? Where's there an alignment is there an kind of clearer kind of alignment in terms of the communication aspect? Or do you hear from the from the, the owner that there is a point deduction or do you just hear from the media or sporting director? No, my line of communication has been, and it is now Mark Bowen. So I, all the information that I get, I got through Mark. And sure. that was we were very specific on that because otherwise you need to go and chase information. The information that Mark is not giving it to me is like it's not existing for me. So I trust Mark 100% and I trust 
all the information that he's giving to me. We know that there's been kind of protests with the fans. They went on from the pitch versus Port um, versus Port Vale. How hard has it been for the players during this last six or um, six to eight months when when you've been working kind of with them in terms of not just themselves but in terms of their mental health, in terms of the squad, in terms of the culture at the club? How hard has that been for them? Yeah, it's not easy. Obviously, not easy because. Uh... We, I think, a lot of us we came here for to to develop a different project, yeah. but uh, I think they had a process similar to my process. I think they learned how to cope with those things. Has been hard in the beginning. You get a little bit used to it, uh, and then you get a little bit tired of the things. But you find that the common thing for us to keep together is the football. You put every all, all the efforts into the football side, and you find a way to express yourself that also can win football matches and uh, then it is like a football is our bubble when we enjoy and then we know the other things are not perfect but we just focus on what we can be focused in terms of you are you bored of this are you bored of having the same questions put at you in terms of the same media attention on this all the time are you getting a bit tired no, I would like to speak more about football, obviously, but I understand that people need to answer and I try to give my honest and sincere opinion and answer every single time that I can. And if I cannot say something, I would not say it. I'm not get tired. Of I get tired of the, I get tired of the continuously uh, chaos around the football in the football club. Uh, because I say, I say, cup. I said after the last game, I I know we have been. The players has been amazing just coping with uh, all the situations around. But there is a there is gonna be a point with the with this group of persons cannot cope anymore with the with the cows. And we need to be careful that we don't reach that point. When you mean that they can't cope with it anymore, do you mean by that that they have to leave the club or maybe or maybe you have to leave the club? No, I just think that as a human being, uh, if you are finding problem after problem after problem in, in, in your behavior and you are just solving problems in the way that you can solve it, but uh, more problems are coming and you are not the person that is making those problems, you are the person that is solving by your performance, yeah. there is a moment that you just, and, and it's not a moment that you can say, it is now or it's going to happen in two weeks or, or it just happened. It's a moment where you start to feel a little bit more disconnected. You, you start to, to put less attention because you reach unconsciously you reach a point where you say you know what it doesn't matter at the end of the day because I'm winning games and they are taking points because other things happen that my own performance and I think this team has not been there in the entire season but I just say and I have seen the process before that there is a point it doesn't matter how good you are doing that people just uh, just change to into enough is enough and we don't need to arrive into that point maybe it will not be the season and, but for sure, we need to find some solutions now, straightforward, to, to, to cope with, to, to allow those players to express themselves in the best way possible. I think there's a lot to really pick out there, but I really want to I know from you in terms of you, you as a leader, um, when you're dealing with these problems, we talk about the motivation, we talk about really, really the process, we talk about the project, and that's, that's all good, and you know, that's, that's all true. But... It's easy for you to stand there in front of the players and say, "But this is a process, and this is a project." But when they've, when you got all this noise, they've sold the training ground. They're in the talks of that, and you got all all more all these problems. How do you motivate a, a group of men and a, when a group of players and staff to keep to keep to keep it going on this kind of rough and hard journey? I think we need to. Sometimes we need to take away the figure of the manager just being the center and, of, and in the pyramid and then making all the things happen. Yeah. I think sometimes I'm them motivating myself. Uh, I think sometimes I'm them leading that process. I They know and everybody knows that in those kind of situations, the only thing I do is just to pass the information into them yeah. and try to manage the that day or the next hours in the way that they can think a little bit more about football. We have some strategies like reducing the level of tactics or mental stress during the trainings, giving more freedom. We, yeah. but, but it's uh, it's not really that I do nothing special. I just try to be very straightforward. In what is the situation? I always try to 
give them the information or if there is any problem, give them already the solution when I speak with them. Uh, and they know, but I also don't want to overload them with all, all the information that I'm leading per day. So when I think it's important, I go to them, it's communicate direct. And if I think that that, that kind of information is going to have an impact into the development of the day or the training, etc., I just try to reduce a lot of context to be more focused in the football. And they pipe and they pick their own motivation by their own uh, internal strength. Yeah, but do you think your role changed a bit in terms of a coach, more of a kind of more of a hierarchy manager kind of thing? Because you're trying to construct the whole club right now with also Bowen. And do you do you think your role you'd rather be really really fo- 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 focus on really the coaching aspect? But do you think you've been taken you've been taken you've been taken away from that a bit? No, I think the role. The role comes with that responsibility, and you need to accept that. And that one part is football, but yeah. as a manager, one part is also the things that happen off the pitch. So I don't think it has changed. I think it has been more challenging than some other okay. club positions yeah. situations. Um, in terms of the training ground, is there any update on that one? Not that I know. Not that you know. Um, how's the um, how has the reaction been? Uh, what, in terms of which new, in terms of the new that we were... The internal matter in terms of the club, in terms of the players, in terms of the staff. Yeah, yeah, but the problem is that uh, we have this, we have the announcement, uh, like we were ready to sell the football club, the, the, sorry, the training ground, there were some bits. Then we have the announcement that we com- got that, and then got that agreement, and then we move forward. And then we have the news that we com- just decided to hold on so it's some it's three different uh, situ- scenarios yeah, and three yeah, different yeah. reactions so uh, <laughs> yeah so then, then, then uh, if you can be more specific I can give you an answer more specific yeah, about no, that no, of course. I um when I found out the news of, of the obviously I would kind of um, I also reach out to you um I was trying to ask for your opinion on it to ask okay. because of because obviously the fans were wanted reassurance they wanted a bit of communication they were scared that they were gonna they were gonna lose their club, um, and I think that is scary. You know, it's been a rich history of incredible fan base and incredible club, and you're on. And when you sell your training ground to another League One rivals, that's quite a big thing. Um, and then obviously the team they play is Saturday. They beat Cambridge four 0 Playing like that, the fans are right really behind them. Um, I did put out a tweet on Saturday. Um, saying that you don't you don't really want to comment on it at all, but you really feel for the fans, you really resonate with them, and you are also right really behind them, and the players are right behind you. Um, the fans are right all they are, you know the fan reactions and everyone of the whole fan base is really behind you, Ruben. How do you react to that? Because I know in October there there were when you were getting a bad result in terms of the start of the process, there were looms about being sacked. And for me, that was crazy because you're so early in terms of the project, as we talked about. But now you are loved by the fans. You're idolised by the fans. Um, what do you have to say to, to really the fans? Because they need some sort of communication. Yeah, all I, all I want to say, first of all, is thank you because I'm feeling a lot of love and... Uh... And uh, a lot of sympathy from them in the uh, in the last months. I think in the very beginning, uh, yeah, we were not winning, we were not good, and they have the right to express themselves. They expressed it, uh, they expected that they, uh, they were they were not agree in the way that we were playing or the way that we were doing things. And uh, always the manager needs to accept that because obviously when you win, it's, it's easier. Uh, I think uh, I think later in the year they understood the kind of challenges that they, we had in the very beginning, and they put it in context the work that we have been doing. And uh, then the third thing I think I've been always honest with them in terms of my communication, in terms of the things that I can say, and in terms of the things that I want them to know. So and I think uh, so they 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 accept that as a as a part they have to accept somebody that. That can speak openly about almost everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to try to defend the club because it's the club that uh, we we all feel for it, and uh, I think it has been quite amazing environment, especially in the last couple of months, and home and away, and uh, the, the boys performing in the pitch, giving making the brawl. So 
I think we 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 got a good and strong uh, uh, connection there, and yeah. I would like to move that even forward. You know, Ruben, I I also saw like a video uh, in about October time when you went over to really the fans and you started talking to them. They were angry and shouting, but you. As the leader of the club, you went over to talk to them, you went over to really communicate with them. I think from that point on, the kind of respect is rude because you were really transparent with them, you were open and you went over to them to face them, which is not easy to do as a coach. What do you think about, and I know this is hard for you to say as well, but I just want to get your thoughts. They've obviously been kind of kind, kind of um, protesting against the owners, of course they have, but what are your thoughts in terms of the running on to, um, onto the pitch? and how they've made their voices known to the owners? Well, I always say that the, the fans always that the, the, the protest or their, their, their point of view is expressed with respect. Uh, I, I, I accept that. And uh, if they are not like in that moment, they didn't like myself as a manager because we didn't have the results. Uh, and if they dislike any other part of the, of the club, they have yeah. the right to protest. When the protest is disruptive to my team, yeah. In terms of football, uh, obviously not the best scenario for me, but I, I know we are in an exceptional situation. So I, I just see a club that has been at the fan base, that has been fighting for their club, trying to, to make uh, things happen. Uh, as usual, you, you, you have a master manager as a person who makes some mistakes. I don't think every action was there perfect for them, but I think... Uh, their intention was always to try to keep the club alive, and uh, I think um, I think they have uh, they have the right to express themselves in that in that sense. Um, Ronnie, Ronnie, lastly now, um, and again, I don't want to stretch you too far, but I do want to ask: What are the chances of you still being Reading manager next season? Well, first of all, I have two more years contract, so this is end of the season and two more years, so. The chances are that I will be I will be the manager. So, um, yeah. That that's that's the that's the first point. The second point is to, because of the club and the year we have been doing, it's hard for me to think more than about today or tomorrow, and yeah. literally it's about today and tomorrow for me. It's I'm taking one thing at a time, one day at a time. All that I want now is just to have a couple of days of off, just think about myself, my family, stay with to them together. And then when I come back on Monday. I will try to, I will try to prepare, start to prepare my team in the best way possible to get the three points against North Hampton. That's my horizon. That is exactly what I'm thinking, and that's why that point of that kind of mentality has allowed me to grow to go through the season in the way that I've been going through. So, so, I, so are you saying, Ruben, that there's a 100% chance that you will not really resign from now until the, to, to the end of the season? And no, I have no intention to resign until the end of the season. I have intention to stay here, to complete my duty with the team, to complete the duty with my players, and to complete that duty with myself. OK, Ruben, th thank you very much. Um, I do just want to say again, and I'll just say it again and again, but your time here, um, your time with the fans, your really communication has been one of the best I've seen in football. Um, because thank I know you. it's been a hard time for you personally, Ruben, um, and... Honestly, from the whole fan base, you have touched our hearts. You have, you have really galvanised the fan base. You've really galvanised the players, and from the fans to the players to the staff to you, we do we do applaud your efforts. So I really do appreciate you and your, your staff and players. Really, thank you very much. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to be myself and to be and to be open and honest and transparent in the things that I do. And I I like that the people like that that part of it because it's not only football. Thank you, Ruben. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.